Good morning. Welcome to Monday Mindset. I want to make sure I did this correctly. I'm going to pull up on my phone to make sure it's actually gone live. Or if you jump on and you see this, you can comment in and say, yep, Luke, it's working. That would be fantastic. Ever since we lost StreamYard, it's been a lot more difficult to go live on these Monday mornings trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, just got back from Seven uh, Figure Summit, Christian Brindle's event. Um, what a fantastic event. Shout out to Christian, the whole team. Um, also, Tony Merwin, our boy here in the group, did an incredible talk um, just on creating vision um, and his story and Grace's story of what they've done. Just shout out to you, uh, Tony. It was one of the best talks, if not the best talk of the event. Um, also, shout out to our boy Cody Askins. He did an incredible talk as well. So if you weren't at Seven figure, figure Summit, you missed out. So check out that event. I think they're going to have it in Utah next year. I could be wrong. I think they're going to have it in Utah. But um, got back from that. I actually spent last week in Virginia, Sandbridge, Virginia. And then I went to Georgia to speak at that event. And the reason why I'm mentioning that, good morning, Lily. Good to see you. Is because I want to share with you just one thing that stood out to me um, as I was preparing for my talk for Seven Figure Summit. And I asked this question as I opened up my talk which is, what is the best advice that you've ever been given? You know, think about that. What is the best advice that someone has ever given you, which is a really hard question to answer uh, because a, a lot of times advice is subject to, you know, just context. Uh, some things resonate at different times based upon, you know, where you're at in your life. But I was thinking about that. It's like, what's the best advice I've ever been given? What's up, Joe, man? Good to see you. It was great seeing Tony, man, at Seven Figure Summit. We miss seeing you. Hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I was sharing with this group at Seven Figure Summit. I was at the beach, and I got some time to be with my mom and my mother-in-law and a bunch of other people. And, and I was thinking about, you know, my mom. She had eight kids. I was the third in eight. And, you know, out of these kids, you know, one became a pilot, one's a doctor, one's or three are entrepreneurs, you know, actually now a fourth, my brother Josh is starting a property management company with me and my brothers, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so he's going to enter into the entrepreneur space as well. But a lot of uh, successful people within our family, and I don't say that as a, an impressive thing, I'm just going, man, why did my mom and dad do so well at raising kids? I mean, we're all a little crazy, but not nuts. And I thought about the advice that my parents used to give me all the time, and my mom specifically because she was diagnosed with cancer about a year ago now at this point. Um, she is doing well, still not, you know, technically in remission or anything like that, but doing well. But even in, you know, being diagnosed with cancer, it's like her demeanor, um, her approach to life, her positivity, her lack of worry. Even though I know she's worried, even though I know she has the same stresses as everybody else, you would think a woman who raised eight kids that homeschooled them all the way to college, she homeschooled all of us, that she'd be a super maybe stressed person or really, you know, you know what do you call it, controlling uh, person. But she's not. She's so laid back. Things don't really face her. You know, the way my parents kind of led us is by values more than rules. Uh, so, you know, they're huge believers. My dad's a pastor that I've shared before. And so he would always talk about, you know, why the why behind the what, as they say, of why we should be certain ways or, you know, what God has called you to be. But one of the pieces of advice that my mom gave um, and consistently to this day gives, and I probably won't do it justice in how she shares it, but um, she would say, hey, you got to know your identity. Um, you got to know uh, what your identity is, uh, because from your identity uh, flows everything that you do. And most of the time when you see people losing it in their life and you think about celebrities as an obvious example, what happens to them, they, they created their identity in the building of this thing that they're going after, and then they obtain that thing, whether it's being a celebrity in music or in sports, and all of a sudden it, they lose it, right? We all see these celebrities, they lose it. And why? It's because their whole life and their identity was shaped around this one thing. And then when they achieved it, they didn't know what else to do. And they kind of went into this spiral. And you see this with entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs that end up selling their business. You know, they've worked their whole life to build something and then they sell it. And literally the next day they have, you know, 40 million in the bank account or whatever it is, but they're depressed because they're like, what do I do now? So much of who I was and my identity was wrapped up into this business and she would always challenge us hey know your identity and of course them being believers and 
you know, they really, I say, impact me with the most powerful thing, which is, you know, your identity based upon who your creator says you are. Uh, so I'm a big believer. I won't get religious on you guys, but I think your true identity comes from knowing who you are in Christ. And if you don't know that, you should, man, go seek that. You know, seek the truth. The truth will set you free, as they say. But you got to know your identity. And once you know your identity, you can then go approach the world. And two points they would make consistently is one is you better know who you are before you get into the situation where you have to decide who you are. You got to know who you are before you get into the situation where you have to decide who you are. And that is a really powerful business principle. Because if you do not have down on paper your identity of your business, your vision, your mission, your values, what you stand for, what you believe, then two things happen to you. One is you actually go at the whim of every direction trying to chase the dollar, trying to chase whether it's profitability or the latest greatest thing, and you never really lock down and commit to something because you're driven by the wrong thing. And this is why when you... Um, a lot of times see some of these entrepreneurs like the Zuckerbergs or the Elon Musk or the uh, Steve Jobs or like Ben Francis, the guy who built Shark, Shark Tank. He's like, I don't even know if he's 30 yet. He might be 30. He's a billionaire. He built this clothing uh, influencer whole thing through Gymshark. Uh, this guy's named Ben Francis. You guys should look him up if you're into fitness. But they asked him one time on an interview saying, hey, you're one of like four people in the world that has been a self-made billionaire under the age of 30. And, you know, how does that make you feel? And he goes, I, I never really think about it. And he goes, I, I never really think about it. And you listen to Steve Jobs and the Mark Zuckerbergs. They're like, that's not what I was doing, what I was doing. That's not why I was building Facebook or why I was building Apple or why I was doing Gymshark. I was doing it because I loved it or whatever reason they end up giving. But they know why they're doing what they're doing. And because they do... They're able to stay focused. They're able to not be tossed and turned by every new shiny object that comes onto the scene because one of the number one killers of any business is you chase too many focuses because you try to be all things to all people and then all of a sudden you're nothing to no one basically. And so it allows you to be focused when you know your identity. But the more important thing I would even say, or I shouldn't say more important, but as important is that when you face adversity, you can withstand that adversity. And this was the key point I was trying to give at Seven Figure Summit before I got into the tactics of marketing. I said, look, I can give you tactics all day long, but unfortunately, people just don't take action. And in order to take action, you got to get motivated because motivation is just enthusiasm to do something, the ability to move against something in your life. And I challenged every single one of them. I said, how do you get the motivation to move against the thing in your business that is holding you back that you know you need to move against? I said, I believe if I take the best advice I've ever been given is you got to know your identity. You got to know why you're doing what you're doing and take it to the next level. I shared the story that I've, I think I've shared on here before that um, we reached a point, and it was a few years back, maybe six or seven years at this point, where I realized we were doing taxes wrong. I thought we were doing taxes correct. We were paying our federal taxes correct, but we thought magazines weren't taxed, which is true in some states, not true in other states. And we ended up having this huge back taxes uh, at a level to where it could sink the company and you know was panicked at this point in time but trying to hold a straight face and i remember my vp of finance at the time is the one who found this out and i just told him i said hey man don't worry we're gonna get through this just don't quit on me and i shared you know at seven figure summit what do you think he did he quit he quit within a, a month or so whatever it was he quit and i said what do you do when you're facing you've worked so hard to build something and you're facing the end of it and you think it's you know oh my gosh this is the end of the world you ask the person who's supposed to help you to not quit on you and then they end up quitting on you but they do it in a nice way but they're still quitting on you what do you do in that moment and i challenged him to say man if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing if you don't have a strong identity and who you are and you try to decide in that moment you're going to quit and that's what happens to most people most people quit in that moment and it's tempting to quit. I'm not above quitting. Like, it's tempting to quit. It's, it's tempting to, at the very least, retract in, kind of like a turtle retracts into their shell. It's very tempting to retract in. And I said, but if you know why you're doing what you're doing and you have a strong identity and a strong why, it allows you to move against. It allows you to almost internalize and go inside, reflect, and get that enthusiasm as motivation is to move against that adversity in your life. And so my challenge to the audience before I got into the marketing tactics was, hey, do you know your identity? Do you have the enthusiasm and motivation to move against the things that you know you need to move against? Because you can hear me talk all day and you can hear all these great speakers like Tony and Cody and myself, but if you don't actually have the motivation to actually implement something in your life, you will not 
succeed. And you'll only get that motivation if you know your identity. So my challenge to you today on this Monday on June 10th, we're halfway through the year, is do you have a strong identity? Do you have a strong identity for your organization? Yes, I think it should be even deeper than that to your personal life and to what you're doing in life. And I think almost they're one and the same, honestly. But do you know why you exist as a company and why you're doing what you're doing? And do you have that identity so strong that you're willing to say no to things? That's a telltale sign for you as a person that you know who you are and what you're trying to accomplish because you say no more than you say yes. Because there are going to be countless opportunities for you to sell other products, do other things, try other and different things. And you got to be careful here because it's everything in moderation, right? I, I We tend to, as um, speakers, talk in extremes, but everything's a balance. I think that's a biblical principle. You got to do everything in moderation, everything with balance. But honestly, like you need to focus in and know who what you're trying to do because you cannot help others until you help yourself and you cannot get good at helping yourself and give from an empty cup. You have to give from a cup that's overflowing. How do you give from a cup that's overflowing? You know exactly what you're trying to do. You know exactly who you're trying to do it for. You know exactly why you're trying to do it. And you focus on that until you get your cup full enough to where it starts overflowing and you have access. And when you have excess, you can actually use the excess to go do something different. But where most of us fail is we get in and we, we kind of know what we're trying to do. We kind of know who we're trying to do it for. We kind of know why we're doing it. But we start doing it and then all of a sudden this other option pops up over here. And it's enticing because you heard some story from someone on stage that's having success selling that product or doing that thing. And we go, well, I need to add that too. And in the end, what happens is now you have another cup. And you're kind of filling this cup and you're kind of filling this cup. But now you're 50-50. And then guess what happens? You're more working it and you're doing that. And all of a sudden another idea comes up because you heard something else on some video. You talked to somebody else and you realize, oh, I'm missing out. I got to get this thing. Everything's a blue ocean. And you add a third cup and all of a sudden you have three to four cups and you're giving 25 to 33% of your effort into every single one of these cups, which is 100% of your effort. So you're working hard and you're pushing and you're feeling like you're, you're doing what you should be doing. But your cup's only got 33% in it because that's all you could give to it. And there's no excess. It's not overflowing. And so you don't succeed and you end up failing. And this is why when you talk to entrepreneurs or business people, they tend to tell you get good at one thing and master that one thing until you literally just have an excess overflowing and then take the excess. And with that excess, if you're like, okay, what do I do with it? Then take that and invest into something else. So I don't know if that helps. I hope it helps you. Uh, but it's something that I shared at Seven Figure Summit at just at the very start of my talk because most of my talk was about marketing, as you know. But I wanted to leave them with a piece of advice that I know is kind of a central truth that helps stabilize me when things are going awry. It's like, Luke, who are you? Remember who you are. Remember what your identity is. Remember why you're trying to do what you're trying to do. And don't vary from that. And that in and of itself will produce results for you because it's just, I think from like a... a uh, personification standpoint, like people can sense that they can feel that they know that they, they have, a, there's an authenticity to it. And it just resonates with people when people know who they are. So that's the Monday mindset, Lily, Joe, appreciate you guys. And Hey, remember, get out there, win for you, for your family, for your clients. Let's make it happen this week. Let's go people. Appreciate you. Bye.